Hey everyone, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Comma Feed. So when you first open up Comma Feed, we'll be presented with a sign-in. I'm just going to use the default credentials of admin and admin, and we're going to go ahead and sign in. So let's go ahead and add a feed. I'm going to pick on Bleeping Computer again. I'm just going to copy the URL at the top here, and I'll show you something really cool. Go to Comma Feed, and we click on the little plus symbol at the top left then it's just going to ask us for the URL and let's do this. Let's just go ahead and paste in bleeping computer and see what it can do with it. I'm gonna hit next. And now it's just asking us to define a, a feed name, which is already populated for us. So I'm gonna hit subscribe and pretty much immediately it's already pulled a, a list of, of articles all the way up to about, it looks like about two days ago and I can click on these. It'll start showing me a little bit of a preview at the top here as I click on them, but I can also change the appearance of the site. If I go to admin at the, at the top here, I can click on the display that I want so I can have a cozy, detailed, expanded. Let's take a look at those. I'll hit cozy. Uh, this is just, it's spaced out a little bit differently, not so uh, jammed up. Uh, detailed is it gives you a little bit of a summary of the article right above. And then we have expanded, which at least gives you as much detail as it has um, in this list. So, you know, when you're scrolling down, you can kind of see exactly what it sets, the, what the article is going into. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna change to back to compact mode because I kind of like compact mode. Just drops down and shows you the information that you're interested in. Which I think that's pretty cool. We have several options. Once you read an article, you can mark it as as read or not, or you can star it. So let's see, I'm going to say keep that as unread because as soon as you move to another article, you can see it's no longer um, it's no longer like uh, like highlighted. So it's kind of marked it as read. We can mark it as unread if you want to. So it keeps it a little bit more. Um, you know, maybe I didn't finish reading this article and I want to come back to it later. But you also have the ability to star it. You can share the article or you can add tags. Uh, so you can be like, this one is about, <laughs> I don't think I can really say that. This one's about iPhones. <laughs> so I've tagged it as iPhones. Uh, it's funny. It's the, the very first one that I pick, or the one the random one that I pick and it has that in it. Uh, well, cool. Uh, let's go move on. Let's do uh, like we can do this one to tag this as, you know, Active Directory. And it keeps all of these tags so that you can add them later on, which is kind of cool because you can also see them on the left here as well. Uh, if we want to, we can also create some categories to put these different feeds in, especially if maybe one of them is about security. Another one is maybe just general world news or something. To do that, it's very simple. We click on the plus symbol again at the top here. And instead of adding a feed, what we're going to do is we are going to click on add category. So let's do that. Let's add security. It doesn't have a parent. And I'm gonna hit uh, add right there. I want you to take a look at something else while we're here. Uh, check out, they have the open, the OPML file. And so if you are moving from one RSS feed uh, reader to another. Typically you can export these files and right here, uh, comma gives you the option to import them. All right, so jumping back to the main interface, uh, we see that we now have security and we can, um, we can go ahead and edit this guy and add him into the security category. And there we go. It's pretty straightforward. It's oh, yeah, not very complicated. If you want to unsubscribe to something, it's also very easy. You would click on the feed itself. You click on this little pencil icon. And one of the options here at the very bottom is to unsubscribe. You just click on that and then hit confirm. Top here. Yep. And there you go. Easy peasy. See, I don't want to unsubscribe quite yet, but let's take a look at the admin section. So this says admin because that's the name of my user. But if I click on my admin and I go to settings, these are the different things that I can customize for my individual use. 
uh, you'll notice that there's not a really a ton of of options here and that's okay i mean that's that's not a bad thing uh, we can enable or disable sharing sites um, if we wanted to adjust my profile settings i have that here so if i wanted to add uh, an api key i could do that I could uh, make it so i make api calls to the software i can also generate one if i wanted to right here at the bottom um or i can just delete my account straight out all right moving on from that Let's jump into admin and let's go down to manage users. So right here is where we will be able to add additional users if we want to by just providing the name and the uh, the password and the email account. <laughs> Always helpful. But um, email looks like is optional. The only thing you really need is the name and the password. So if we jump back out, that's pretty much it. So not a lot of options, right? But what it does, it does really well. And there's a lot of people that find a ton of value in this software. It's very clean, it's well-written, and it also just works. So if you're looking for something to not put a lot of fuss and muss into, then definitely consider comma feed. I've heard a lot of really positive things mentioned about it on Reddit. Uh, let me show you how to get it up and running on your own Docker server. Okay, so I'm going to go off camera for a little bit because frankly, my camera battery died and I don't want to stop making this video. And I don't think that you're really going to miss my beautiful face too much. And this will give you an opportunity to concentrate on the screen anyway. <laughs> so, all right, guys, now we're going to start uh, where we typically start. And that is with a Google search. <laughs> so let's do that. Let's do a search for comma feed. All right. And the very first thing that we come across is their official site uh, where you can try a demo if you want to, um, like on their platform before you even fire it up on your own machine. That's cool. I'm going to click on the GitHub link here at the bottom. And this will walk you through the installation features, stuff like that. Uh, the very first thing that you'll run across is the Docker images. And this is kind of where we're going to start. Uh, you can go through and do this manually and set it up on, you know, without Docker if you want to, but probably beyond the scope for this video. Uh, let's do this. Let's hot, hop over to the Docker hub. And here we have a couple of examples. We have the, uh, we have the advanced and we have the basic. I think we're going to do advanced because I like to keep my, you know, my data in its own database. And if you have the resources, probably the best way of doing it, especially if you plan on keeping this and using it in some sort of production fashion. So to look at this right here, we have a bunch of really good things. Let's go ahead and copy this guy and let's bring him over to our portainer. Once we're in here, I'm gonna to go to stacks. I'm going to create a new stack. I'm going to call it comma feed. So there's a couple of things that I like here and a couple I don't. I'm going to be changing around and using um, the, the map volumes. Uh, so I'm going to uh, allow us to, to manage this a little bit easier uh, simply because I don't want to have to search and remember where the path is. It's a lot easier if it shows up under volumes for us. So to do that, we are going to, to change that. So that'll be a little bit different. Another thing that I'm going to do is to use an environment ver uh, file instead of specifying my username and my password once and then twice and then thrice for the database. It's kind of um, it's kind of uh, kind of redundant and it'll be a lot easier if I can just manage it with uh, the environment file down here at the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to do that, too. I'm also going to make it really easy for you. I've already done all this and the only thing you have to do to uh, see all of the things just copy and paste without having to type is really just go to my github page for snack time and then we'll go under youtube and youtube again and then we'll click on the comma feed and i have set up here my docker compose file and the the dot env sample file so we can just really just copy and paste this so let's do that uh, you'll see a lot of these things are very similar. Uh, so the only thing that's really different is I'm using the environment variables here. And that is, you can tell that that's the environment variable because it starts with the dollar sign and then has the little, little swirly brackets. Uh, next up, I have 
commented out the port because I'm going to be using Nginx Proxy Manager to filter all of my traffic. I would do want this internet facing. If you do not want it internet facing, just simply uncomment these. And then when you start up the server, you'll be going to the host name and then the, the port will be, uh, it looks like 8082. Uh, Going down a little bit farther, you'll see that I've also specified the same environment variables down here for Postgres as I did for the actual application. So these are going to match. And if I change one, it'll change them both. And lastly, I did uh, specify that the uh, the volume is going to be comma feed DB, and that is going to go to the path of slash var lib Postgres data. And last uh, up, up, up on the list was just the, the creation of the volume. And you have to do that for for Portainer just tells it, hey, I've created this volume or you you need to create this volume for me as I'm going to be using it. And yeah, I don't know why it doesn't just do it for you. But, you know, that's not my call. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let's jump out. I'm going to copy this new guy. Not going to be very different from this one. So when I paste it, not going to be very much different at all. Yeah, pretty much identical, just with a couple little tweaks. And a last up, I'm going to back out. I'm going to go into my .env sample file. I'm going to copy this uh, contents as well. And I'm going to go back to Portainer. I'm going to scroll down and hit advanced mode. And I'm going to paste in that information at the bottom. So this is the place that you'll be changing your username, your password, and your database. We're not changing the the, uh, the Postgres database container name, uh, because if you did that, you'd have to change it up here at the top. And we're just not gonna do that. We're just gonna keep it simple. And let's do this. Uh, for my user, I'm fine to keep it comma feed. For my password, I would encourage you to make it a little bit more complicated, but for now, I'm just gonna say one, two, three, four, that's fine. And for the database, I'm also fine with comma feed. You'll see that the database name right here, you see where that text matches this text at the top here. Just uh, something cool you can do to save yourself a little bit of copying and pasting credentials. Now let's deploy the stack. Cool, everything went fine. We got a good deployment. Let's go under comma feed and make sure everything is, is firing up fine and click on this little button up over here and this is our logs and we see that our logs are, are looking good we've created a database we've restarted the server um there's some errors in here but it's probably perfectly fine uh let's see going back we can take a look at our app and seem to be fine here too I don't see anything that's blaring or it's, it says it's running, which is good. It's not giving me a bunch of ugly error messages, which is also good. All right. So while we're still in Portainer, let's make sure that we add our Nginx proxy manager to the same network that was created for uh, comma feed. I would go under Nginx proxy manager, scroll all the way to the bottom and let's drop down this network and select our comma feed and hit join. All of our work should be done in Portainer. We shouldn't need to be doing anything else. Uh, next up is the changes that we'll be making in our uh, domain name. So we'll have to create a subdomain so that when we go to like comma feed .sinhow, it knows exactly where to send us. So I'm gonna be doing this under Namecheap. Again, uh, feel free to use whatever DNS server you're more comfortable with. If you have GoDaddy, it's very similar. It's gonna be using a lot of the same terminology. I just prefer name cheap. No reason, just easier. All right, let's do this. Um, I'm going to copy this external IP address I'm already using somewhere else, and I'm gonna add a new record. I'm gonna add an A record. For my host, I'm gonna just call this comma feed. And for my IP address, I'm gonna paste in the external IP address of my server. And I'm going to save all my changes. Once this goes green, you are good to go. Now, next up, let's make a change to our Nginx proxy manager so it knows where to send this traffic it is now going to be receiving from commafeed.sinhow.com. 
All right, once we are in here, let's go to proxy hosts. Let us add a new one. And let's zoom in a little bit. See what I'm doing? I'm just going to be calling this amafeed.senhow.com. This is the subdomain that we just set up. And now we need to tell it, Nginx Proxy Manager, where to send this traffic. Uh, we're going to be sending it to the container name of, uh, of our newly created comma feed. So let's zoom out. Let's go back to Portainer and we know what that is. Uh, right here, cool. It's the main application. Obviously, I don't want to send it straight to the database. It wouldn't know what to do with it. And we're going to copy this guy. I'm going to go back to our proxy manager. We're going to paste him in here. And now we are going to need the port number. And this is the port that the container is listening for traffic. So we kind of got a hint on what that was. Uh, let's look back at our at our Docker container, our Docker Compose file. And once we go under there, it's right here. So here we go, we have our ports. Uh, the first port is the port that it would be listening on on the host machine. And the um, last port, the last number right here is the port that it is going to be expecting traffic on. So let's just copy this 80, 82. Go back to our Nginx proxy manager and paste it in. And I'm sure we could have typed it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to obviously block some common exploits. I'm going to enable WebSocket support. It just makes usually things e run easier. And I'm going to make this publicly accessible. If you wanted to restrict access to certain IP addresses um, or have another username in front of the already username, I guess you could do that. It seems to be kind of redundant and annoying, but maybe, maybe that's what you like. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Um, Cool, we got this loaded, awesome. Uh, it is unencrypted, no bueno. Let's change that. I'm gonna click on the little periods. I'm gonna hit edit. And I'm going to go to my SSL. I'm going to request a new certificate. I'm gonna force SSL, you cannot use unencrypted. I'm gonna agree the terms of service, booyah, and save. If you did everything right, and if you did it in the order that I just did it, it should work for you. If you didn't do it in the order that I did it for some reason, I don't know, uh, then you may have to wait for a little while for you know the DNS settings to update. But I think we're good. Let's do this. Uh, let's make a let's do a quick, a quick test. Let's see if it worked. If I click on the address, awesome. If this came up for you, you did everything right. If it didn't, that's what the comment section down below is for. Feel free to ask some questions. I'm gonna use admin. I'm gonna use admin, and I'm gonna be in. Obviously, you may want to change that password or username completely. <laughs> Do what it does. I'm back. Did you miss me? <laughs> I bet you did. All right. Well, guys, that pretty much sums up this whole video. Uh, we went from looking at the product to completely installing it in record time. Um, if you did have any questions or comments, please obviously feel free to leave them down below. If you found this video informative, you literally liked comma feed and you think you're going to be using this um, every day or, you know, in your personal professional life, maybe give me a thumbs up. <laughs> it is appreciated. Uh, otherwise, I appreciate you guys spending time with me and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Take it easy.